Hey everybody, happy Wax on Wednesdays. There has been a lot of exciting stuff going on in the studio. I've been working lately on a series of photo encaustic pieces, so I thought today I would show you exactly how I go about mounting those photos to the cradle board. And this is just one way. Uh, there's several different adhesives and uh, things that you can use to mount these pictures on the board, but this is a really good way, an easy way. If you've never mounted a photo on board before, this is an easy way to get started. Started. I'm using a matte photo. This photo was printed an inkjet photo that was printed on matte paper and I'm using uh, the brand is in breathing color and I will list all the supplies that I use today on the blog post on sharyreplogal.com for the blog post for this video. And this is an eight by 10 cradle board and I'm just fitting. I, what I did was borderless printing and um, that means that there was no margins there on the photo and it gives me a little bit more leeway in my composition and seeing exactly how i want that photo on the board so i usually do this do a borderless printing and um, and that way i can um, sort of move the picture around even more of course i've edited it in photoshop uh, to how i want it in this case i've converted it to black and white but now i can uh, position it really how I want it compositionally on that board and then just crease the edges. And that way when I adhere the glue, I can apply it um, right back to where it was by creasing the edges just lightly with my glove. And on those inkjet prints, you wanna be careful that you don't scratch the photo, especially on this one, has a lot of dark areas to it and it's really easily scratched. So you wanna be careful, but I'm just lightly going around and, um, and applying some creases to those edges so I can place it exactly where it was after I apply this glue. The glue that I'm using is a PVA glue. It's a, a pH neutral archival glue that is for book binding and this works great for mounting the photos to the cradle board. I'm really generous with it. I'm not really worried about using too much and um, I'm gonna spread it on with a foam roller. You can use a foam brush and if there is gaps, once I get this spread out, then I'm gonna go ahead and add some more glue. I really wanna make sure that there's no gaps uh, of glue in there that um, where the paper could not have a possibility to not adhere to this board. And one thing that I'm really excited to share is that all four of these photo encaustic pieces are going to be featured as a free tutorial, step-by-step -step tutorial on the Patreon channel. So for the next four weeks, um, the same, I'm using the same photo in four different ways, four completely different ways. I'm printing it out in different ways. I'm using different encaustic techniques for photo encaustic and all four pieces are gonna be a step-by-step -step tutorial free on Patreon channel. So that this week it is this piece that we're mounting here. Um, first is already up on the Patreon channel step by step on exactly how I did um, this entire painting process. And each week for the next four weeks will be a different piece done in a different way, giving a, a different composition, a different, completely different feeling for each of the four encaustic pieces. So I'm really excited about that. And this is a bonus, this is bonus content for the Busy Bee tier and above. So for that $4.99, I think it is um, a month or above um, subscription rate, then you can get this free tutorial of the, for the next four weeks of all four pieces, all four paintings that I've done for this photo encaustic series. If you haven't checked it out yet, the Patreon channel has a lot of really fun content going on over there. It's a brand new channel. It started last month and it already has a whole lot of fun videos on there that, um, that are unlocked at each subscription level. So it's like having little um, tutorials, little fun, little workshops, little mini workshops that are available that I'm offering. I know right now that it's um, really difficult with the economy to purchase a full workshop shop. Um, maybe it's, maybe you've been looking at the encausticology image exploration workshop, which is my photo encaustic workshop. And it's just a little bit too much right now. Well, the, um, 
Patreon channel is a way to get fun little mini workshops every single week and every single month at a really low price. So it's a lot of value for your money. And I hope that you'll join me and check it out. And you have access to all of the videos as long as you're a subscriber. So um, once we, right now we're about at the um, month and a half. So there's a month and a half worth of videos on there. And as long as you subscribe, you can always refer back to, uh, to the older videos. Plus you get new videos each week. So here I've just put a piece of wax paper over the, uh, over the photo on the board and I'm used both a catalyst wedge to sort of get those air bubbles out and press those air bubbles out. And now I'm using a brayer. I like to use that catalyst wedge at first to really sort of press down and get any air bubbles out. And you can see here that I'm starting from the middle with both the catalyst wedge and the brayer. I do the same thing. I start from the middle and then work my way out, working those air bubbles all out. So I have a nice, really good, um, adherence to my uh, from my photo to my board I don't want any air pockets or any air bubbles and this is my one shot at doing this so once the glue starts to dry of course I'm not going to have any recourse in getting those um, getting those air bubbles out so I want to make sure that I do a really good job uh, to begin with after that I'm going to put some really something really heavy I'm going to put wax paper over it again and then I'm going to put something heavy on it and let it set overnight usually and um, um, let that glue dry. And I'm going to show you one more tip here. This is the, another, the second piece that I'm doing in this encaustic series. It's the same photo. It's a close-up version. So it's a different angle, different composition. But on this one, I am sanding the edges and I do this on every single piece. I always want to make sure that my piece is adhered on the edges. And this is my way of finding out um, that there's no lift in any of the edges. I'm going ahead and sanding it. Um, and also it gives sort of that vintagey feel and also the feeling that the paper has always been part of that wood. So I really, um, this is a really important part of my personal uh, photo and caustic process is that I really love to sand the, the edges of each and every photo that I do to make it seem like it's, it's a seamless, um, it's a seamless part of the photo is a seamless part of the wood and that it's always been part of the wood. It doesn't look like it's been a paper mounted to a piece of board. I'm also very careful when I'm doing this not to go ahead and scratch that surface because it's really easy uh, to scratch the ink on the top of the inkjet print. So and now sometimes I do on purpose if I want a more vintagey look then you can very very lightly go in with a piece of sandpaper especially in those dark black areas and um, and get a little scuffing for a vintagey look. But if that's not what you want, then be careful that you're just going around the, uh, the edges. And again, with that uh, paper towel, wiping it off, I'm being very, very light handed with that so I don't scratch my photo. So I hope you found these photo and caustic mounting tips really helpful and stay tuned to the end of the video for the two of the pieces that I've done for this photo and caustic series. And if and if you'd like to join me for the full painting process and full step-by-step uh, -step videos of exactly how I painted all four encaustic photo encaustic pieces, then join me over on the Patreon channel. We'd love to have you. And there's a lot of exciting creating going on. So I hope you have a happy wax on Wednesdays. We'll see you next week and happy creating.